Okay, so now let's go into a bit more details about how expectation affects monetary policy and its efficacy. So we've already looked at the new ice curve. Uh, the Ellen curve is effectively the same because of what we talked about in this year. The first point is that the government can only affect the policy rate in this period, not our expectation. So the Ellen curve is still just a straight line, a horizontal line. So let's draw that. So over here we have y or output and over here we have r which you may call the current period interest rate what's the book calling it current interest rate yeah so on the y-axis we have current interest rate ice curve is steep this ellen curve is still a straight line so suppose this is the policy rate five percent six percent whatever it may be this is it and this is our equilibrium uh, let's call this y star okay. so we are over here okay. now suppose what the government does is it Let's go to the same example. The government reduces the policy rate. So suppose the government, or rather the central bank, reduces the policy rate from, from R bar to, let's say, R star. Okay. So we end up here, LM, this is L star, uh, actually let's call the old one actually Y bar, and so the new equilibrium is Y star. Okay, so you see what we have already talked about is that there was a relatively large fall in the policy rate, but a much smaller uh, rise in output. So at first glance, what would look like that when we introduce expectation into the mix, the, the strength of monetary policy is weakened. However, that doesn't have to be the case because, uh, I'm going to write this down, if monetary policy uh, leads to firms, investors, and consumers uh, to revise their expectation. of future interest rate then and only then can the effect of monetary policy be large let me explain what i mean by that is that in this case people are not changing their behaviors too much and as a result output is not increasing by a lot because this fall in R is simply applicable for this one period. However, if we can also, if the government policy can also lead to people changing their expectation, and they expect that R will stay low for the time being uh, and into the foreseeable future. Okay, so let's write this down. People expect the lower interest rate to remain at the low level for a number of periods, let's say, number of periods. Then what will happen? Let's come up to 
to the I squared, okay? And I'm going to write down the entire thing. I squared is a function of A, where we have Y, T, R, Y, T, R, plus G. What has happened is people's expectation about future interest rate has changed. People now expect that interest rate will be lower in the future. What happens if expectation about future interest rate changes? Our ice curve is going to shift to the right. So this is our new ice curve. Mm. This was the new Aaron. So we have a new equilibrium at this point. We were at A, then we moved to B. Now we've moved to C, where this is the new output. So you see that by reducing the policy rate from R bar to R prime, R star, government was able to increase the output from y bar to y prime but this only happened because the government was also able to modify people's expectation if expectation had not changed then we would have seen a relatively smaller change in output so this is the takeaway from here is that this right here this is important is that once we introduce expectation into the mix, the strength of monetary policy depends entirely on what people's expectations are. If expectations change, then we can have a strong monetary effect of monetary policy. Otherwise, it won't be possible. Uh, in the next video, we are going to talk about fiscal policy.